This is Beyond a Reasonable Doubt with your hosts, Mark Garrigus and Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the church. We're going to mend it. Get it on and welcome to the best 15 minutes or so in the universe. It's Beyond a Reasonable Doubt. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Mark Garrigus in New York City. Beautiful day in the in the borough today, and uh, I'm uh, I'm delighted to see you. And what a story we're going to talk about! I can hardly wait to hear your analysis here. Um, yeah, I've been hearing bits and pieces of this story that have been breaking over the last several days. But Mark, you probably have a better handle on it than I. So why don't you get it started? So the um, we've covered before. This family who is um, in South Carolina, who has an outsized legal presence in the legal community there, um, I, three or four generations going back in, uh, of powerful, um, well thought of uh, lawyers in the uh, community uh, about, I don't know, Gary, what was the date um, in a tragic uh, awful situation. The, uh, the a lawyer's wife and his son were murdered. And then um, uh, coming on the heels of that, on this weekend, Friday, the lawyer who uh, has suffered through that tragedy um, apparently resigned from his law firm after a forensic accountant revealed that millions of dollars of the firm's money had allegedly been embezzled. He's then driving his car somewhere uh, on the side of the road, has a flat, is fixing his tire. And his story is, is that somebody drove past him and then turned around, came back and shot him in the head. He was airlifted to a hospital. I'm getting reports now, though, that it may have only been a graze shot, meaning it just grazed his head, and he's already been released from the hospital. And um, you you might remember that the son who was murdered also was accused of complicity in a manslaughter of yet another case. And there were allegations there of the outsized influence, outsized influence, um, getting those charges rejected. But um, I have a theory here, Adam, you know, you're, you're the one who's gotten me addicted to conspiracy theories. Would you like to hear my conspiracy theory? I would. Yes, please. Or do you need more facts? Should no, more I, facts? you know, I was sort of thinking about this guy's driving along, gets a flat and someone tries to assassinate him. That feels spurious or weird to me. I mean, if there was, in fact, a hit on somebody, you wouldn't tell them just drive around the neighborhood and have the off chance this guy's going to run over a drywall screw. You know, so it seems weird that he was shot at and then grazed. And, um, you know, if, in fact, somebody said, I must kill this person, a, a contract, so to speak, put out on them, it seems like a weird way to go about doing it. But uh, so that whole part is pretty curious. But yes. I've also wondered why he was airlifted if it was the superficial wound that they are now reporting to airlift someone is a, an endeavor. Yeah, I, I agree why that couldn't have been assessed you know, on the ground, I have no idea. It could also just be protocol. If there's a gunshot wound to the head, maybe they don't know if there's an exit wound. I mean, who the hell knows? But uh, oh, I could I could see that because uh, as somebody who's had head injuries, uh, you know, not just being dropped on my head, but there, you know, that's the it can get bloody pretty quick, and you you it's difficult to assess um, immediately what's going on. I suppose, right? Yeah, so your theory, Mark. Okay, so this is my theory. Originally, I thought that there was a good working theory, and my guess was the prosecutors were looking into the connection because they had reopened the, uh, or at least reportedly, according to the police, had reopened the prior, I believe it was a boating accident involving the son who was murdered, mm -hmm. and that they had found evidence during the search. So that kind of was the cops telegraphing that, you know, they were headed in that direction. This, however, um, and, you know, I know his lawyer, I have not reached out to him, and I, I don't know that I'd want to put him in this position, but the lawyer re revealed the, uh, that not only 
uh, had there been or it was revealed that he had resigned from the firm, that there was money allegedly missing, that he was going into rehab. And Gary, in the statement, I think I texted you something that gave me a clue. I think he talked about a long battle. So for those who are speculating that the substance abuse or whatever, or the addiction, whatever it was, and by the way, gambling can be an addiction, um, that it had been a long battle. I think that there's probably prosecutors and police on a working theory that he had incurred all kinds of, he had some kind of a either gambling or substance abuse addiction that caused the purloining of the money, the purloining of the money from the law firm. Um, then was there, a, was this a shooting or was it self, uh, you know, self-inflicted? And um, if there was a shooting, was that some, somebody sending him a message? And were the previous murders of his wife and child a collection effort? Was somebody mm. trying to come through to send a message, hey, um, uh, you, uh, you're into us for serious money and we're, and we're serious about our collections. Well, that's, as you were telling, as you're talking about embezzlement and then gambling addiction and then him going into rehab, which could be gambling addiction, um, it, it started, uh, turning the gears in my head because you can be addicted to pot or addicted to booze or even cocaine, but you can underwrite that, you know, on a, on a good lawyer salary. Um, gambling, yeah, Richard, the Richard Pryor line, cocaine is just God's the way of telling you, you make too much money. Right. But, uh, gambling, that's, that's another, that's another animal completely. And so if he worked up a debt with the wrong people, and when it comes to gambling, it's always the wrong people, that's a pretty decent theory that they were trying to collect and sending sending a message. Now, as far as the graze to the head and the car breaking down, that that's again sounds like a low percentage sort of mob hit to me. As a matter of fact, it was funny when I was talking to uh, Sammy the Bull Gravano, who was on my podcast. Who you had on week. ACS just yeah. last week, right? Interesting guy, killed a lot of people. Um, but you know, so I sort of said, uh, so when you got to kill a guy in the mob, how's it work? Like you stake out his house, you know, in the movies, they're staking out the house, they're staking out the Guma's apartment, they're staking out his favorite eatery. And he goes, uh, no, no, we don't want him running around and, uh, we don't want the family involved and we're not going to hit him at home in front of his kids. We're not going to do any of that in, in front of witnesses and stuff like that. We just call him in for a meeting. And then he, they call you in for a meeting and you come in and you go, what's the meeting about? And you get a 44 to the back of your head and you don't know it. You don't struggle. You don't fight. You're just called in for a meeting. That's how they, that's how they do most their, most their hits. You know, it's funny you say that. Do you ever ask um, Sammy about my favorite line, the difference between the mob um, or organized crime in the government is at least organized crime spares the women and children. <laughs> um, if the, but there, your point is extremely well taken. I mean, there, the, this story, uh, to quote the late great Larry King, gets curiouser and curiouser, and <laughs> everything about this supposed shooting yesterday on the same day that he resigns from the law firm and announces he's going into rehab. And I mean, talk about a day that you really would like to relive, right? Um, the forensic accounting firm has told me um, that they've confirmed I've uh, embezzled millions of dollars. Uh, I'm now resigning from my law firm. I'm coming on the heels of my wife and my son being killed. And um, on top of it, I get a flat tire and then some guy grazes me with a, uh, a brushback uh, gunshot pitch. What do you got, Gary? So let's recap. I, I just want to put a finer point on this. 
the, this family has had quite a, a quite a stretch here. So in June of in 2019, rather, there's the boating accident, and the son is drunk, and, and there's investigation, and all that. He in, kills a 19. He killed a 19 year old friend of his in right. June of 2021. He and his mother are murdered by two separate gunmen at their home, and their bodies are left to be found. Then this guy. So then, in the course of the and investigation, this, this guy found the bodies. Right, right he did. Yeah. But let's before we get to this guy. In the course of the investigation of the murder, the cops open up a murder of another guy from 2015 that they believe now that the son and some other local youth may have been killing, may have been involved in killing because he was gay. So then this guy shoots himself in the head or is shot in the head, depending on how you're you know, going to interpret it, resigns from his law firm, goes into rehab for speculations of gambling or opioids, four cases in six years. Right. Yeah, so I I don't know, Mark. I mean, your 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 job is uh, on one hand is to ignore all of this. You know, if there's smoke, there's not necessarily fire. I mean, that's that's part of your job. There's the you know, oh, he killed his wife. They were arguing. You know, uh, in the days going up to it, you have to go ignore that. Or there was uh, threats. Someone someone in another booth in the diner they were sitting at said they thought he heard him say he's going to kill her you know blah 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 but you have to kind of go ignore all that we got it we got to stay with the nuts and the bolts did he do this or not but in your professional opinion when there's this much surrounding somebody it seems like that somebody's involved with something yeah well look the the key piece in my mind just and it's probably because i've seen it happen so many times the the missing money and not insubstantial we're not talking chump change here we're talking real money missing money from the law firm and then the uh, coming on the heels of the the multiple murders and the dropped prosecution i mean it just screams that there's somebody or something trying to collect a debt and send a message here. It also, is there, since he was so ensconced in this world, it seems like there was a lot of favors, possibly with judges or prosecutors, attorneys, uh, uh, congressmen, you know, people, politicians, things of that nature. Is there the, here's a, a second thought, which is this guy may turn state's evidence and sing like a canary, much like Sammy the Bull Gravano did, to get out of, essentially, Sammy the Bull Gravano was involved with killing 19 people and went and turned state's evidence and basically got a slap on the wrist. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a way to get out of 19, being involved in 19 murders makes you a serial killer, and it means you're going to go in jail for, you know, consecutive life terms or and or the death penalty. But there's a way to work with the government, but you got to you got to give them something for that. Do you think this well, guy had something? Yeah. You know, it, we he's not he obviously, given who he is has the wherewithal, the means, and certainly he's got the access to the legal talent that could um, advise him that, hey, if you're ever going to cut a deal, now's the time to cut a deal. I mean, look, going into the rehab, um, the day that you've been exposed, allegedly, for um, a massive embezzlement um, is going to uh, that sends, you know, a flashing red light to me that somebody's looking to mitigate a bad situation. And what you're describing is trying to mitigate um, a really bad situation. And if he was, um, if he knows or has a pretty good suspicion as to what happened with this double execution style murder, that's that's a chit he will. Uh, undoubtedly try to play uh just a curveball unless gary's got more in this particular case we're gonna have more on it in the episodes to come we might even get some guests involved we'll see but uh yeah it's weird that bill cosby's at home right now it just kind of <laughs> popped into my head right what do you think bill cosby's doing right now is he having an english muffin is i he assume watching, he's listening to this is he watching no, wheel of fortune like what no, is he's, he's eating pudding 
Yeah, oh, he's having <laughs> he's having Jello pudding. It just, I, I, it was so. How fun. did you go to Bill Cosby? I, I don't know. I just sort of blinked my eyes in my brain and realized, oh, he's home. Like yeah. we, we kind of that that I don't know what happened during that news cycle, but it it was a thirty two hour news cycle. It was like Bill Cosby's going home. And then at some point, we all just collectively turned the page and got on to Afghanistan or global warming or, or something, ivermectin or something. Well, we you want to take jumped. that? I'll, tell, I'll give you one more. How about the fact that R.V. Weinstein is sitting in custody in Twin Towers in Los Angeles and Andrew Cuomo is no longer the governor of New York and the entire Times Up board resigned in mass because of it. And what do you think Weinstein's thinking as he's sitting in his cement um, chateau uh, over there in downtown LA? Like, what the hell? What Bill Cosby's home, I'm sitting in a cell, Cuomo resigns and Times Up all resigns? Has there ever been a time that you can remember where the zeitgeist affected the legal outcomes? Like what goes on? I mean, we had the Derek Chauvin trial. As I as I say, Chauvin shows up to something that's already in, in process. You know, he's called um, George Floyd is already struggling. What have you? He gets murder which it seems like, you know, manslaughter maybe didn't seem like it, it, it rose to the level of murder. The uh, cop that uh, shoots the uh, gal in the neck during the uh, during the insurrection slash uh, riot, he's exonerated. I mean, has there ever been a time when the zeitgeist, the news cycles, social media affected the the in, or infected the inside of a courtroom like it has now. You know, it's interesting you say that because back in the '90s and the early 2000s, I used to um, write and lecture on the um, politicalization of criminal law, and I think maybe the next uh, move now is to start writing about the um, social media. Um, polarization of the criminal law, because it, it sure seems like uh, movements, and, and we've talked, about, I've talked about this, and it's just starting to get traction with some publications. People ask me, do social media movements help? And I say, of course they do. I mean, they help whatever side is trying to galvanize the, uh, the, um, the movement. And it's, you know, you want to you want to temper that. Some of these things are good. Some of these things are are damn frightening. I mean, you know, the idea that um, somebody is going to be influenced by the um, you know the the Christians and the lions uh, and the audience with thumbs up or thumbs down, we always thought was a bad thing. And uh, we that people don't even know. Going back to belt and suspenders, they don't even know what I'm talking about when I refer to that now. All right. Well, an ominous note to go out on. I, I, that's the second show in a row we've gone out kind of <laughs> ominously. I got to start. I got to start doing uh, something uh, to to go out on a high note. Uh, I uh, will be this Friday, Royal Oak, Michigan, Royal Oak uh, Music Theater, doing a show there, and then Saturday I'll be in Kansas City at the Arvest Bank theater there i'll be all over the place just go to adamcroll.com and you can check out our pluto tv channel our chassis channel 687 lots of free material there what do you got mark i got the provas both in new york or back open doing gangbusters come by gct or uh, the moxie at times square go to uh, engine company downtown or mediterranean top tapas at tenny casa tropicana in san clemente uh, one of Gary's favorite places, and uh, the V Palm Springs Hotel. Or if you're in the Hamptons, stop by, have a meal at night, and stay the night. So until next time, Adam Crow for Mark Garriga saying mahalo. Thanks for listening to Beyond a Reasonable Doubt. Stay tuned for more bonus episodes coming soon.